Hey guys, this is Maker Dev here. Uh, this is going to be my first video uh, in the new 3D printing upload list. Many of these will be time lapses with voiceovers. Um, I'm starting this list because this has been my hobby since December and probably a future uh, business uh, being a 3D print lab in the Milwaukee area. So apologies if you can hear the printer in the background. I'm working on something else that's sort of neat and geeky that I will feature in a future video. Uh, the time lapse you're looking at now is a two color low poly squirtle model. Uh, it's being printed on a Taz 6 printer. Uh, why squirtle? Well, because Pokemon's fun and cool. And uh, actually I'm needing some cool stuff in the background of my live streams. So why is squirtle uh, red and black? Well, um, I thought it'd be neat to have uh, my concept of an alternate form Squirtle, kind of like the Alolan forms. Uh, so this is my concept of a fire dark Squirtle. Uh, why dual extrusion? Uh, well, a dual extrusion uh, on a 3D printer allows you to get two colors uh, or two separate materials um, of plastics uh, in a single print. Um, so in this case, it allows you to make a Squirtle character who actually looks like Squirtle, not just like a single color. Um, but for more advanced applications, it lets you print uh, one extruder in just a regular plastic to make the model and another one in a dissolvable filament uh, so that you can make prints that you would not normally be able to print otherwise, um, except with uh, supports. But um, when you print supports in the same material, it's often very difficult to remove them, especially when they're kind of like embedded in the middle of the print. Uh, so some of the drawbacks of dual extrusion on TAS-6, extruders have to both stay at the temperature for printing, right? And that's what the default is. So let's say we're printing with two different colors of PLA as we are here. Uh, both extruders are heated up to about 205 Celsius for the entire print. When the print is big enough as it is here, the non-active extruder will often pass over uh, other parts of the print as the active extruder is working on other parts of the print. And so what this causes is that if something that is that, you know, that gets, gets the plastic to that point where it's melting passes over close enough to other parts of the print, uh, it's going to leave a little like drag line or, or in, a, in an even worse case, like if it just sits there for a while where it's a part where the other extruder is kind of staying in one place or really close to one place, you, you will uh, sometimes even get where it'll like actually make a crater uh, in the other side because it's, it's held over there for so long. Um, and, and you don't want that because that's going to significantly reduce print quality because what's going to happen is it's going to lower the level or parts of the level of that layer and then it's just going to be messy when it tries to print over that later. Uh, the other problem uh, coming from the non-active extruder is uh, oozing or leakage uh, from the non-active extruder. And what that means is that since it's up to temperature, once it stops printing, uh, the next part of um, the filament that's been pushed through just stays there. And because it's at print uh, temperature, uh, it oozes out a bit. And then when that passes over a different part of the print, it actually makes this little glob of the other color. Um, and you can definitely see that on the front of Squirtle here um, as he's printed. So how to resolve these dual extruder problems? One, one, thing, one thing you can do is uh, Z-Lift. And what that means is that um, whenever uh, one of the print instructions is completed, uh, you lift up by a pre-specified length. Uh, in this case, uh, for these dual extrusions, I think I did one or two millimeters. Um, it does add a lot of time to the print, but it really, really helps because um, when it's stopping and thinking about where to go next, it's not just staying there and leaving these ugly deposits of globs behind. Uh, another thing you can do is make sure that it moves a little bit between layers as it's switching. Uh, now, that's the most critical part because uh, during the layer switches, it actually switches often from um, one extruder to the other. So it's pulling uh, the filament out of one and, and descending it into the other. And if you just leave it uh, at the place where it stopped for a while, it creates those big craters like I was talking about before. Another thing you can do, and this would significantly increase the uh, print time to the point where it's probably not too desirable to do it, is uh, go ahead and turn uh, down uh, the temperature on the non-active extruder. But the thing is, is that you have to wait for the thermostat to, to register it at the lower temperature and you also have to wait for the other extruder to heat up before it starts. So that seems like it's not, um, I mean the Squirtle for instance took I think something like 18 hours. So I, I really don't want to double the print time to like a day and a half. 
right? Uh, another thing you can do is uh, some of, there's a newer printer called the Ultimaker 3 that actually the extruders will physically retract um, between the layers. And then there's another printer out, and I don't know which one, that will actually purge the remaining plastic so that leakage isn't possible. Um, so that's going to do it for this uh, time lapse. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and uh, check back and subscribe for uh, more 3D print videos in the future. Thanks, guys. As always, stay tuned to the end of the time lapse for some really fun bonus content. Whoa! Squirtle! 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 Squirtle!